Professor Randy Yalmarsson, a member of the Committee for the Economic Science Prize. Please tell us, uh, what is this prize about this year? So the prize this year is to Claudia Golden for having advanced our understanding of women's labor market outcomes. And I think, what do we mean by that? All right, so Claudia Golden is a labor economist that has combined labor economics and economic history and has looked at how female labor market outcomes have changed throughout 200 years of history and come up with some very surprising findings that helped us understand both you know, how participation and earnings change, but also why. And why is the most surprising findings then? The most surprising findings. So if you were to look in the last 50 or 100 years, you know, most people would think female are always on an upwards track. We're increasingly more likely to participate in the labor market. Um, but she has shown us by going even further back in history and collecting data that people never thought could be collected that this upward path was not you know, always true. That actually in the 1800s, female employment decreased um, from like a high of 60% in 1800 to about 15, 20% in the early 1900s. And why was that? So, so this brings us sort of the second contribution. She explains you know, this sort of U-shaped pattern throughout history with a, a framework that is about how women make decisions on whether to work in the labor market. And there, there are many factors that go into these decisions. In the 1800s, so what explains this 1800 decline? In the 1800s, we had industrialization, right? And in, industrialization brought new jobs from agriculture to the factories, uh, where women had to work in the factories, or people. And the conditions in factories were very dirty. There's a stigma on females participating in these factories once they got married. So that's one part of the puzzle, that there's this stigma. The second part of the puzzle is, if I can't take care of the farm at home, how can I also take care of my children? It became a choice that they had to choose to work at ho stay at home and care for the children. So she sort of went back in history to explain in what way could this prize affect our lives today? What could we use this knowledge for? Right. So she didn't only explain history. So I think the answer to that is, is two parts. Or she's explained female labor market outcomes throughout the last year, 200 years, but also today. So she studies some much more contemporary changes as well and, and causes and the role of education and like birth control pill. But I think the important takeaway also is that by focusing on one context, on the US, we can observe many changes from this long run perspective, right? That we can observe what happens when we go from an agricultural society to an industrial society. What happens when we go from an industrial society to an office-based society? And there are many countries today that are not at you know, the same stage of development as the US. So we can learn from the past by looking in the US and speak to what might happen and what might be relevant in other more developing countries today. So uh, were you there when she got the call? Do you know what her reactions were? Yeah, she was, she was, um, she was excited uh, and honored, uh, but also very calm and collected. So. Yeah. And what can you tell us about Professor Golding? Right, so she's, she's a, a professor of, in the economics department at Harvard University. I would say that she's kind of unique for bring, bringing two fields of economics together. Right, she, she's a labor economist, but she's also an economic historian. And she has brought all the tools and models and methods of labor economics to the study of economic history, and in this case, the role of, of females in and history. She's the third woman being an economics prize laureate ever. That, that, is, that is true, yeah. So if you would conclude, like in 30 seconds, why you are so excited about this year's prize, what would you say? Yeah, so, so for me, you know, she studied something that many people, many historians, for instance, simply decided not to study before because they didn't think these data existed.
how can we study women in the labor market in the 1800s? And she, that, you know, she was a detective. You know, she really got her hands dirty, digging through the archives to come up with new data sources and ways to use them. And it's so impressive because you know, today we have computers and such powerful tools that allow us to read digitized censuses. But when she was doing this work 30 years ago, you know, she was way before her time in coming up with these historical statistics. And in what way do you think this can change the women's labor market in the future? I, I think you know, one of the important takeaways for me is all of the research that she has inspired. Um, there's, you know, so, you know, people keep asking, well, what are the policy implications? And, and they're not necessarily clear. She doesn't make any. But she has inspired many researchers to study these questions in the U.S. and other countries. What are the effects of policies on these gender gaps? Um, so I think there's a lot for us to learn in the future going forward. Thank you so much, Professor Randy Yalmarsson, member of the Committee of the Economic Science Press. Thank, Thank you. you.